All right, to begin your Boxster oil change, you're gonna to wanna to jack it up, uh, quick jacks or jack stands, whatever gives you enough room to uh, kind of shimmy under the car. And then first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is come back here and pop your oil fill uh, cap off. Um, and just kind of leave it covering, but not sealed to uh, this lid to allow for uh, air to get in there and fill up the volume so your oil drains nice and smoothly. Uh, once that's done, now we're gonna go bottom side. So here we are uh, underneath the car. Um, I've gone ahead and opened the oil fill cap uh, that's in the trunk. And I'm gonna loosen the oil drain plug, which is here, and that's an eight millimeter uh, Allen. And then loosen the oil filter, which is here, which uh, you can get a special tool for, but usually with some dry gloves, you can just get them off with your hand uh, if they haven't been over tightened. Um, and then when you start draining, you'll want at least 10 quarts of capacity, which I have between these two. Um, and you'll want to get them, you want to kind of raise your drip pans up high because this is a pretty big hole uh, nor, uh, relative to other cars. So quite a lot of volume comes out and it tends to splash uh, if it falls and hits a pan that's far away. So it, oh, it doesn't hurt to have a helper. Uh, one of you can loosen this while the other one holds the pan close by. Um, and then same for this. I would, I would recommend draining everything or starting to drain most of it from the pan before opening the uh, oil filter uh, housing. But yeah, that should work. So just crack that, loosen this, then get your pan nice and close to start so that you don't uh, kind of splash everywhere. All right, so here is the oil draining. I have the um, drain plug and the oil filter removed. Uh, this is looking kind of forward. Uh, you can see the two exhaust manifolds are right there and there. Um, yeah, so drain plug's pretty hard to miss. Oil filter housing's right there, or oil filter housing boss. Um, and you're going to need at least 10 quarts of capacity. Um, this is like eight, and then that is a little more over there, uh, just to get all of the oil out. I think these take eight to nine quarts, uh, depending on fill. So... Yep, going to replace the filter and a um, little crush washer on the plug now and put them back in and fill it back up with oil. All right, so here's what you'll need to replace uh, for the filter. So new filter should come with, by the way, it's uh, Hengst E14 D77 is the number. And then it should come with the filter and a new O-ring. So once you pop that out, that might get stuck in the um, oil filter housing boss on the engine. Uh, you're going to want to take a pick and pick that off. And then you're going to want to press this filter uh, all the way down onto the boss in the center of this canister. Um, that'll be the filter all done. And then for the drain plug itself, uh, it's probably smart to replace this crush washer. This is an aluminum crush washer. And it is... See from FCP Euro, it's this part number, 977751. Uh, and it's an M18 by 24-I believe it's M18 ID and then 24 millimeter OD uh, aluminum crush washer. So yeah, should probably replace that and then feel free to replace this drain plug if the uh, threads have been used or um, or if it looks rough. So yeah, gonna button those three things, or I, I guess just this and the filter, put those back together, put them back in the car. So for the um, for the O-ring here, there are little grooves uh, every now and then in the uh, threads on the oil filter canister. So you can kind of get a pick in there, get it under, and then just pull it right off. It doesn't matter, you're replacing it, so you can stretch it or kind of work it up a couple threads at a time. Just pull it around and work it off. And we'll replace this with the new filter. All right, so with the new drain plug and gasket in and the new filter in, we're gonna tighten these up. So the drain plug gets 37 foot-pounds according to Pelican Parts, which 
seems like a lot. Um, and you can probably just kind of snug it up. I'll tell you how much that, so I have this set to 37 and right now it's just a uh, finger type with the socket. So let's see how much further that is. That seems like a lot. Okay, so it's about, it's about a quarter turn further. Um, when you finger tighten it, about a quarter turn further uh, to tighten it into the sump. And then for the oil filter housing, what I like to do is I like to make sure that this boss on the canister hits the uh, boss on the uh, engine block or the case half really. Uh, make sure there's no O-ring showing. I think this spec is 25 Newton meters. I think it says, it says so on here somewhere. Yeah, right there, it's like 25 Newton meters. Um, but I, I think hand tight is adequate. Um, just hand tight, make sure that O-ring is fully seated against or inside the boss. And then uh, hand tight with, with dry gloves. I think that is fine. All right, so the oil filter and drain plug are installed. So we'll go back top side and put, uh, maybe start with eight quarts and see how the dipstick shows, but I had to put in nine quarts last time to get it full. So um, I might just put nine quarts in. Now I'll put eight, I'll put eight in, check it, and then probably add another quart. All right, so for the fill procedure, you're gonna want, um, Probably nine quarts, at least eight, if not nine quarts. Um, my car tends to be on the higher end. I think the capacity for um, Boxsters and 911s with the M96 is 7.8 to 8.8 quarts. So I'm gonna start with eight. I'm gonna check the level with the dipstick and then most likely add a ninth. Uh, we'll see how the level looks. Um, and yeah, just pretty simple. Fill them right through here. And we'll leave it up there. Fill it right through here, through this little uh, funnel guy that pops up. Um, I like to use Driven DT40. I get it from FCP Euro, Lifetime Returns. Uh, so that's cool. Buy it once and then every oil change is free after that. Um, you could also use uh, Redline Synthetic in 540 if they make it or 550. Um, I've heard that's good. I know Porsche recommends Mobile One, so I'm sure a Mobile One 540 European car oil would work. Um, and I bet Liquamali would work as well. Uh, you know, I think this has slightly higher molybdenum and zinc. Um, yeah, this has slightly higher molybdenum, molybdenum and zinc than most oils. So good for kind of higher mileage, uh, high performance engines. So I'm just gonna crack open eight of these and pour them in, then check the level and uh, see if we need the ninth. All right, so the eight quarts are um, in the engine and I've just been checking the level. I think we're looking pretty good. This is a really long dipstick. Maybe halfway up. I might add, not have it shake. I might add just another, another like quarter of a bottle and see. But we are definitely, definitely close. All right, so just added about another uh, third of this bottle. And we are right up to the full line on this side and oil might have run but it was about uh three quarters full on this side so i'm gonna call that good enough uh, we're gonna put the dipstick back in kind of get a sense for how long it is finish putting that back in and uh, we're gonna cap this 
just push down the funnel. Make sure my text is the right way around. All right, oil dipstick back in. I'm gonna take the waste oil, put it in there. Uh, make sure you have no leaks. Uh, take it for a test drive, double check the leaks again, and you should be good. That's how to change your 986 Boxster oil. So oil change is complete. Um, and here's a look at what was in the oil filter of the this 1998 Boxster with 176,000 miles. So last oil change was at 170,500. Uh, I bought the car at 169. No service history, no IMS, no timing chain service, not even oil change records um, from the previous owner. And so I uh, just wanted to go through and show you. So all these little bits you see, um, I went through with my magnet and I could not find any ferrous metal. I mean, very, very little, maybe one or two pieces that were almost invisible to the naked eye. Um, but all of these pieces here are not magnetic and they're all, if you kind of take a close look, they're all plastic. Um, so what this is, is this is, these are bits of the timing chain guides that are, uh, that are wearing away. Um, and that is the, that's going to be the killer on these cars. Uh, these have nine timing chain guides through the engine. Um, and the plastic used when they were new was just kind of inferior. It's not going to stand up to the test of time. Um, so yeah, just going to document this uh, as it is. I think I'm going to do an earlier oil change for the next one, maybe a hundred or I'll do like a 3000 mile interval for the next one and then send, take a sample and send it out uh, to see what's going on, what kind of metals we have in the engine. And then uh, we'll see where the future takes us with this car. But uh, yeah, this is um, this is what you want to watch out for if you have an early, an early nine eight six or nine nine six, um, especially the early dual row five chain motors as they're called. This is this is what to watch for. So take a close look at that oil filter uh, when you pull it out. 